Hello. Um, today I just kind of wanted to talk briefly about the <clears throat> various fans of certain franchises, um, like movies and such. Uh, this can also go into other things like um, uh, video games, comic books, uh, and some of those even go into movies. Even TV shows, also. Um, but I think uh, I'll probably like stick to something fairly simple, like um, Star Wars, for instance, or Batman. Um, you know, the fans within these franchises, um, in many ways, seem to be fairly, I guess you could say, divisive or even divided, um, particularly when it comes to, like, say, Star Wars, um, with the prequels, um, many fans weren't fond of the prequels, it seemed, um, especially since the internet was really huge when The Phantom Menace came out. Many people who were upset vocalized their, uh, dislike for the film. And later on with the prequels with episodes 2 and 3, though 3 is often regarded as the best prequel. Um, and, um, but still I guess because it's part of the prequels it gets hated as well. Um, now that's not to say that the prequels don't deserve any sort of criticism. You can criticize the original trilogy as well, very legitimately. Um, I know they're not perfect, but I enjoy them all the same. I think they're great. I think they're all great films. Um, you know, the, the original six. I'm not really fond of the sequel trilogy, as I said here in various videos. Um, but I do my best to try and be civil, in that I'm not... I don't come across as somebody who's angry and hates those who like the sequel trilogy, like episodes 7 and 8, because I'm like, yo, there are people who like them. That's fine. I mean, I like the prequels during a time where it seemed like you can't like the prequels. You can't love the prequels. You can't even think they're somewhat, sort of, kind of decent in one way or another. You either hate them or you're just an idiot who knows nothing. And in some ways I kind of see sort of similar pattern with the sequel trilogy. Um, though uh, one difference is many people kind of nitpick the prequels to death. Where I see people having legit complaints more often with um, the sequel trilogy. Um, and I'm not saying that the sequel trilogy doesn't get nitpicked. Yes, it happens. But with the prequels, I think a lot of people just thought it was so hugely different than the original trilogy that so many people, I guess... I keep saying so many people, when the reality is it was just a small minority of people that were really loud that sounded like a majority. Uh, they were very vocal of their opposition for the prequels that seemed like if you liked the prequels or loved them, you were an outcast. Um, no, that's not the case. Um, and uh, if people like the sequel trilogy, that's fine. Um, though I will say, uh, I may be kind of lost when I've, I have seen some people comment on posts like Facebook and some groups or uh, even in YouTube comments that, you know, they like the, all the films, you know, the prequels, the original trilogy, and the, the sequel trilogy, but then they say, like, the sequel trilogy is the, are the best films of the entire saga. I don't know, that's just me, I mean, maybe because I love the first six so much that, while I don't mind people, I don't care if people enjoy the 
sequel trilogy, you know, whatever, to each their own. But I'm just like, I don't know. Like, and these are people who are long-time Star Wars fans, keep in mind. Not just new Star Wars fans who... That's, if people were introduced by these films, or to Star Wars with these new films, and okay, I could see how these would be your favorite movies, but I don't know, I, I kind of am at a loss when people say they like the new films over the original films, the original Star Wars films, even the prequels, I just don't, I don't, I don't get it, but maybe I don't need to get it, you know. People like what they like. Um, I don't always have to agree with it. You don't have to agree with it, but hey, uh, we can all just if people in the Star Wars community, is fandom, whatever you want to call it, if we could all just calm down, I think, uh, just, yeah, you know, maybe things would be better, but I don't know if that will happen anytime soon. Another thing is Batman. Um, I see a lot of people get on people with, Oh, what the best Batman, who the best Batman is, or what the best interpretation is, and blah, blah, blah. I've seen so many people say, um, the best interpretation is, uh, either the Burton versions, or the animated version with Kevin Conroy. Um, now, I've never been a fond, that fond of Batman animated series myself. I'm sure as a fan of Batman uh, and other fans hearing this will be like well, like the animated series blasphemy and whatnot. I'm just more of a live action person myself um, at least when it comes to like a comic book film when it comes to comic book characters superhero characters whatever you want to lump all that stuff as some people like one over the other but, you know, I mean, I just, I like live action more than animation. Um, I guess for me, if I'm going to get some, see, like, Batman drawn, I'll get the comic book. I'll buy, I'll get a comic book, and I'll read it. Or a graphic novel, or whatever you'd like to say. I just have, when it comes to watching Batman, like, say in any kind of medium, TV or film, I prefer watching live action. Um, so when it comes to live action, you know, I like Christian Bale's interpretation. I like Christopher Nolan's trilogy of films. I've said this before on this channel. Um, and nothing against Michael Keaton, nothing against Tim Burton. I love those movies. I enjoy them. But the Nolan trilogy has a story, and I know he didn't plan to make three films. I mean, I mean, yeah, early on there was stuff floated about the possibility of making three, but they focused on one movie at a time. But with each movie, they made sure to connect each film with each other. Like The Dark Knight, Batman Begins, and the Batman Begins hints at the Joker being the villain. In The Dark Knight, we see the Joker as the main villain. At the end of The Dark Knight, Batman is on the run from the police because he is seen as the bad guy for taking the rap for Har the death, the murders of that were committed by Harvey Dent. In The Dark Knight Rises, we see that continue, and um, you know he's he hasn't been active in. Eight years, you know, he's been, you know, his leg hurts, because remember he fell on it at the end of a dark night, you know, saving Gordon's son from Harvey Dent, Two-Face. Um, he, uh, and some people say, like, oh, it's because of Rachel, but uh, not really, I mean, Essentially, Rachel was 
you know, Bruce Wayne's in this story. That story, uh, the Trojo for Bruce Wayne, was he, uh, she was his way of having a new life. But, you know, okay, she's died. It sucks. It's unfortunate, but I have to keep going on. You know, try to go on the way he could, but. And then that part of him. Well, then was taken away because he takes the fall for Harvey Dent, you know, to do a good thing, to help the city, to help Gotham become as great as it can be. Um, and uh, he sacrifices himself, and in doing so, after a period of time, Bane comes along and then just... <clears throat> Oh, that that was accomplished was then just kind of, well, it worked for a while, but now we got to do something else. Um, and I'm kind of rambling on and on, but basically, all this is to say, like, you know, people kind of nitpicked at this, the, the Dark Knight Rises one. I've, I've, I've made a video or two as to why that film is a very good film, and it's very decent. It's my favorite film of the trilogy, but to me, I think the trilogy, the story, and the is what really gets me. The story of Bruce Wayne, and that's a version of Batman and Bruce Wayne that I always actually wanted. And Michael Keaton never really had that for me. So even when, even though I'm not fond of like the animated stuff as much as other people, um, when people then say like oh, Michael Keaton's the best, I just He's a, he was a very good Batman uh, for when those films were made. Um, but to me, Christian Bale embodied the character of Bruce Wayne, the character of Batman that I, as a kid I always wanted to see, reading the comics and watching the movies. I wanted to see a dark, gritty version of Batman. Christian Bale was that interpretation I really wanted to see. And with the Dark Knight trilogy, I even got to see a Bruce Wayne story. I didn't truly realize I actually wanted all along until it was all said and done, because now the story is complete, and I'm able to think back and look, and I'm like, I really, you know, this is exactly kind of what I wanted, and I got it without kind of asking for it in a way, if that makes sense. You know, I didn't ask for a Bruce Wayne story, and yet I got one. Because I think you should really care a lot about Bruce Wayne as much as Batman. Because uh, I cared about Batman a bit more than Bruce Wayne in the Tim Burton films, and I think you should care about them very evenly, not one more than the other. And I think also uh, Bruce Wayne is Batman. It's not Batman is Bruce Wayne. Because when I hear people say Bruce Wayne uh, like is the mask and the true persona is Batman, that kind of implies Bruce Wayne pre his parents murder was always Batman. He just needed the death of his parents to uh, bring out his real self and that's not true. You know, Superman's the real uh, person. Clark Kent's a mask. Uh, um, Wonder Woman, Diana Prince, whatever. Wonder Woman, Diana the Princess is the real one, and you could say Diana Prince is her mask. Um, with Bruce Wayne, it's the opposite. Bruce Wayne's the real person because he wasn't always this tortured. He wasn't, he didn't have these abilities as a kid. He, this is something that came about very both suddenly and slowly over time. Suddenly because in an instant his parents were killed and then over time it slowly grew. Like he wanted to make sure Nothing like this ever happened to anyone ever again, but it took time for 
that promise to be fulfilled by him. And, um, you know, Batman fans, it seems like if you don't articulate your argument, or not necessarily argument, but your thought on one thing, like why I think Christian Bale, Batman and Bruce Wayne interpretation, which I think I decently did here. I explained why. You know, he was the that was the interpretation I was wanted. He was I think he was very real. I cared about Bruce Wayne as much as I did Batman. Um, same I could say for Adam West. Adam West I cared about Bruce Wayne as much as Batman. I mean yeah you could say, well we saw Batman a lot more, but you see a decent amount of uh Bruce Wayne in the series, as well as the movie, uh, Batman the movie. Um, and what's interesting with the Dark Knight trilogy is you see more of Bruce Wayne throughout the trilogy, so you really care about him more than, say, Batman. And Christopher Nolan said he wanted, for Batman Begins, when you see Batman, it was a reward. It's like you've been, you know, he didn't want it to just be like, oh, well, oh. Where's Batman? Where's the bat suit? Why isn't Batman here yet? Blah blah blah. He wanted it to be kind of like a maybe a reward is not the best word as a thing, but it's more exciting when you see Batman. Like you were already invested with Bruce Wayne, but now the excitement has gone. The excitement you've been feeling throughout this film has now gone up a lot more. And now you're just like, well, man, this is, he's, ooh, ooh, ooh. this is great. This is better than before, because now you're really invested in the story. And um, with Adam West, I, he, as goofy and campy and fun as that version was, that he was Batman to me before of Christian Bale. Because of Christian Bale, he's now my second favorite Batman. Uh, even though I say I always wanted a dark, gritty Batman. And that's the version I do like in the comics. Um, I, uh, I still love the Adam West version. Regarding, like, say, Val Kilmer um, as Batman, Bruce Wayne. I don't think he was horrible, but, you know, the material wasn't the best, and I think he did the best with what he had. Um, he could have been better, but he is what he, he, or his Batman was what his Batman was. He's not awful, but he's not fantastic at it. He's just okay. George Clooney really walked through his part, I'd say. He didn't really seem to care. He was just there. Um, I think Ben Affleck is decent. I think he was all right um, for the version he was of uh, Batman that they had. Um, but you know, it, it that version seems to be very split. I don't think he's the worst Batman ever, obviously, but I don't think he's the best either. Um, and now that nobody really knows what to think with Ben Affleck now, because it's like, oh, what's going to happen with his movie? It's been taking forever. And it seems like they've been halting, and we don't entirely know what's going on with Ben Affleck. Um, and him being Batman now. It's like, like, it seemed to have been an agreement that he was the best part of Batman versus Superman. And then Justice League came out, and it's like, yeah, he just just kind of was there. He didn't seem interested. So it's like, don't know entirely what happened there, but uh, you know, some like Ben Affleck the best, and that's fine. Some like Michael Keaton's Batman the best. Some like Kevin Conroy the best. That will say with the Joker. Um, I guess I guess since I like live action, I do like Mar uh, uh, Heath Ledger. He is my favorite Joker. Though my second favorite 
the Joker is actually Mark Hamill. It's a very close second, and the reason is because, while well, one might wonder, well, if you aren't f that fond of the animated stuff, why would an animate uh, an actor doing the animated Joker be uh, fairly close to your favorite? Well, seeing behind the scenes look of Mark Hamill being the Joker, and then hearing other people talk about him playing the Joker. He really gets into it. He's like moving his hands and he's just like, he's getting into it. Like he's on camera, yet not really. Uh, well, I guess in some instances he is because they shoot behind the scenes stuff. But he like gets into it. He's acting. And um, and I'm not saying voice acting is easy, obviously, because you know, you've got to in inflict such emotion with just your voice. So I'm not saying what Kevin Conroy does is, no, oh, that's easy, anyone can do that. Because it's not, it's not easy at all. you got to be really talented. And, um, and he does have talent. I'm not saying Kevin Conroy doesn't. Um, but he's just not my favorite Batman. Um, I don't really know where I would put him, honestly. I, I just know my two favorite Batmans are Christian Bale and, my, and Adam West. Um, but yeah, it's because of how Mark Hamill acts that I can actually see him become the Joker or be the Joker um, in a live action role if they ever used him. I guess I'm saying, well, he's too old now and blah, blah, blah. And whatever. Um, but Heath Ledger was so interesting and a lot of ways original. Uh, he really made that character his own, like no other before him. And um, it's just same as what Christian Bale did. You know, researched the character, did what they could to become who they were. Um, and I will say with Heath Ledger, he Gary Oldman has says he wasn't always in character. I was like a lie people made up or. Not necessarily a lie, but a myth because of how in depth he got into it. He he would joke around on set and he would talk about his daughter and he would do this and that. Like, you know, if he's going to be full method actor, he, yeah, he Ledger wouldn't be even discussing his daughter. He would be so like, uh, Joker doesn't have a daughter. So. No. Um, so he wasn't it. Uh, so that's another thing I'm going to say because some people say, oh, the Joker killed him. No. Unfortunately, Heath Ledger's uh, uh, combination of uh, pills he was taking for, like, because he had problems with sleeping, he had insomnia very bad, badly for years. You know, he would take some sleeping pills to help him sleep and relax, and he was also sick with pneumonia, so he was taking stuff for his illness, all that. He eventually gets so tired, he, he wants to rest, and takes one too many. It's very unfortunate uh, that he passed away. Um, I know this kind of got a bit uh, sad, but again, I kind of want to just give a bit of a different aspect of the Batman community as well regarding the villains, you know. Because uh, that's another thing. Well, who's the best Joker? It's like... And it seems like people just can't accept people having an, a different opinion, just like... It seems like Star Wars. Um, it's like... Everyone likes different things. And even though I may not be fond of the animated... Batman series or the sequel trilogy of Star Wars so far of how it's gone. I'm not going to hate people or be angry at people for liking stuff I'm not too fond of. Um, and I don't even dislike the animated Batman series. It's just, I just kind of thought it was okay. Whenever Mark Hamill showed up, that was the best stuff in my opinion um, 
that could just be me. Um, but I just, uh, yeah, kind of want to just talk about some of the fandoms or the fans of franchises and how people kind of get divided. Um, even in some ways, like, you know, you with Grand Theft Auto. I did something about Grand Theft Auto 4 not too long ago. And people, you know, one thing is like a debate of what's the best game, you know. I gave my case last time about Grand Theft Auto uh, 4 being the best uh, game of the franchise, or at, least my, or at least my favorite game of the franchise. You know, people will say or argue, like, no, San Andreas is the best, or now Grand Theft Auto 5, or... Vice City or three or you know, some say Grand Theft Auto Online. Well, I'm not too fond of Grand Theft Auto Online myself. Um, that's just me. Um, if you're a fan, awesome. Have at it. Um, I've just never been hu overly fond of online gaming myself. Some people kind of ruin it for everyone else. So he'll just kill everybody. You know, it's like not giving anyone a chance to do all this. And I've tried to actually, uh, you have to, for Grand Theft Auto Online, you have to do these training stuff. Like, uh, you have to do a certain whatever to get uh, to a certain place in the game or online to accurately do all this stuff and interact with people more um, and, I, and I like I did everything it said yet I can't continue with it for whatever reason I'm still locked in this thing like you have to unlock the, something it keeps telling me I have unlocked blank and it's not showing up and I have no idea how to fix it uh, and that's another thing I just on top of people just kind of being, I don't know, just doing whatever they're doing to just kind of ruin the fun for people. Uh, it makes me not want to ever uh, go online with Grand Theft Auto anymore. But I never really did that in the first place. So, yeah. But some people just kind of. ruin things in different kind of franchises fans of various things uh, people just have a tendency to unintentionally or perhaps intentionally just ruin some things or try to it's just not fun to ruin something that people enjoy or try to ruin something that people enjoy um, but yeah, I've kind of rambled on for a lot longer than I intended. Uh, so, yeah. Fandoms. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. Uh, just depends on who it is. And I guess what kind of fans. So. I uh, will just let you all go now. I've been almost talking for 30 minutes so until next time uh, I will see you later um, I'm gonna take a bit of a break from this channel for a while for like a week or so so no f video Friday next Wednesday I will post a video because it'll be my birthday and I've done that every year essentially for quite a while since I was at least 20 so I'll keep up with that and uh, yeah so see you next Wednesday um, hope you all have a good day a good week and uh, just see you all later all right uh, yeah don't really have anything else to say.